before moving on in this playlist, I wanted to make a video here that just sort of talks about what all this means as far as Bell's inequality, or at least what a lot of people seem to think it means. So for a great overview of the experiments showing violations of Bell's inequality, which led to the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics for Elaine Aspect, John Clauser, and Anton Zeilinger, you can check out this PBS Space Time video, which I'll have linked to in the lecture notes in the description down below. So, in the end, if we take the EPR, minimum requirement for an element of physical reality, and this is from the paper by Greenberger et al. 2007, they say they were interested, they being EPR, they were interested in the completeness of the theory, of quantum theory, and they define a complete theory as one in which every element of the physical reality must have a counterpart in the physical theory. As to the phrase physical reality that occurs here, they made no claim to be able to define it in general. Rather, they gave what they thought should be the one minimal requirement that an element of physical reality should exhibit. It is this requirement which seems so necessary and obvious that quantum theories violate. They propose that if, without in any way disturbing the system, we can predict with certainty the value of a physical quantity, then there exists an element of physical reality corresponding to this physical quantity. Then the GHZ experiment, which is similar to a Bell experiment, but on three entangled particles, shows that, and this is again from the Greenberger et al. 2007 paper, thus we reach the general conclusion that not only is there no way to form a classical, deterministic, local theory that reproduces quantum theory in general, but that even in the simpler case that one can make definite predictions in the EPR sense, as they were discussing up here, it is impossible to do so with such a model. And so, in other words, a classical, deterministic, local theory of quantum mechanics makes incorrect predictions about what will be observed in experiments and is thus precluded. And so, this is sort of coming down on that side of saying that we must have non-locality in our quantum theory. And so, Travis Norson talks about how a lot of scientists seem to think that Bell's theorem and the experiments that show violations of Bell's theorem demonstrate that quantum mechanics can't be a hidden variables theory. And so a lot of prominent scientists seem to think that Bell's theorem definitively proves that quantum mechanics cannot have any hidden variables, not just local hidden variables. Indeed, until doing research for these videos, I also would have said the same thing. That's not to say that I'm a prominent physicist, only that I can at least find solace in the fact that I was in good company. It is one of those things that gets said so often by such brilliant people that it just sort of becomes the orthodoxy, regardless of accuracy. This idea that we can't have any hidden variables in our theory. So Travis Norson, however, is very adamant that this is not the case. But keep in mind that he is a strong advocate of the pilot wave theory, and so he does have an axe to grind, with the pilot wave theory being a candidate theory that both has hidden variables, namely the position of the particle, while also violating Bell's theorem. Note, though, that Bell himself was a proponent of pilot wave theory, and so it was not a devotee of the orthodoxy spawned by his theorem. Norson, in the book Foundations of Quantum Mechanics, quotes several of the aforementioned prominent physicists as they invoke the incorrect orthodoxy that Bell's theorem puts the final nail in the coffin of any hidden variables theory. So here I'm going to quote Norson at length from his book. And so he says, There is, however, a surprising amount of controversy about what exactly should be inferred from the empirical violations of Bell inequalities. In particular, many people have taken Bell's theorem as a proof that hidden variables theories are not viable. Eugene Wigner, for example, wrote about the possibility of a hidden variable's completion of ordinary quantum mechanics, that the proof of von Neumann uses assumptions which, in my opinion, could be quite reasonably questioned. Here, Wigner was in total agreement with Bell, who, recall, showed in his 1966 paper that von Neumann's assumptions were, in fact, totally arbitrary and unwarranted. But Wigner goes on to note, in my opinion, the most convincing argument against the theory of hidden variables 
was presented by J.S. Bell, so John Stuart Bell. A similar remark has been made by the eminent theoretician Rudolf Peerls, and sorry if I mispronounce that name, but that is how it's actually spelled right there. If people are obstinate in opposing the accepted view, they can think of many new possibilities, but there is no sensible view of hidden variables which doesn't conflict with these experimental results, i.e. aspects experiments. One of the people who won the 2022 Nobel Prize. That was proved by John Bell, who has great merit in establishing this. Prior to that, there was a proof due to the mathematician von Neumann, but he made an assumption which was not really necessary. And more recently, Stephen Hawking summarized the situation as follows. Einstein's view was what would now be called a hidden variable theory. Hidden variable theories might seem to be the most obvious way to incorporate the uncertainty principle into physics. They form the basis of the mental picture of the universe held by many scientists and almost all philosophers of science. But these hidden variable theories are wrong. The British physicist John Bell devised an experimental test that would distinguish hidden variable theories. When the experiment was carried out carefully, the results were inconsistent with hidden variables. Thus, it seems that even God is bound by the uncertainty principle. God does play dice with the universe. Norrison goes on to say, it is easy to multiply examples. In a review article on 100 years of quantum physics, Daniel Kleppner and Roman, I'm not even going to try pronouncing that, of MIT wrote about the experiments showing violations of Bell's inequality that their collective data came down decisively against the possibility of hidden variables. For most scientists, this resolved any doubt about the validity of quantum mechanics. And in a similar article celebrating the 100-year anniversary of quantum mechanics, Max Tegmark and John Wheeler wrote the following. Could the apparent quantum randomness be replaced by some kind of unknown quantity carried out inside particles, so-called hidden variables? CERN theorist John Bell showed that in this case, quantities that could be measured in certain difficult experiments would inevitably disagree with standard quantum mechanics. After many years, technology allowed researchers to conduct these experiments and eliminate hidden variables as a possibility. In their preface to the published proceedings of a conference honoring Bell 10 years after his death, Reinhold Bertelmann, a longtime colleague, collaborator, and friend of Bell's, and Anton Zeilinger, one of the authors of the Innsbruck experiment paper discussed in the last section, explained how although Bell had seemingly opened the door to hidden variables by refuting von Neumann's supposed impossibility proof, he immediately dealt them, i.e. hidden variables, a major blow. In 1964, he showed that any hidden variable theories which obeys Einstein's requirement of locality, i.e. no influence traveling faster than the speed of light, would automatically be in conflict with quantum mechanics, while a very tiny experimental loophole in principle remains for local realism, and that would be that parameter independence thing that I already talked about in a previous video. It is a very safe position to assume that quantum mechanics has definitely been shown to be the right theory. Thus, a very deep philosophical question, namely, whether or not events observed in the quantum world can be described by an underlying deterministic theory, has been answered by experiment thanks to the momentous achievement of John Bell. So, Norrison goes on to say, What is going on here? How can all these people claim that the experimental violation of Bell's inequality somehow refutes the possibility of an underlying deterministic or hidden variable completion of quantum mechanics when such a theory, namely the de Broglie Bohm pilot wave theory, already actually exists and is demonstrably consistent with these experiments. Part of the answer, to be sure, is that most physicists are simply not as aware as they should be about the existence of the pilot wave theory. They've heard of it but never looked into it and hence don't actually understand how it works and as we've seen, they dismiss the broad category of hidden variable theories, in which the pilot wave theory is just one concrete example, on the grounds that they have been ruled out experimentally, as shown by Bell. There is a kind of rich and tragic irony here, inciting Bell as having supposedly refuted hidden variable theories, and hence entrenching the unjustified belief that the pilot wave theory cannot be right and must not be worth looking into, when, as we have seen, Bell's theorem was actually inspired by Bohm's 1952 pilot wave theory papers. And indeed, Bell remained far and away the pilot wave theory's greatest champion until his death in 1990. 
but there is more going on in the citation of Bell's theorem as refuting the hidden variables program than mere ignorance of the pilot wave theory. Some of the people who make this kind of argument do know about the pilot wave theory and reject it on the grounds that it is non-local and hence an apparent conflict with relativity. This point of view is perhaps best encapsulated by David Merman's remark, to those for whom non-locality is anathema, Bell's theorem finally spells the death of a hidden variables program. And so that's the end of that long quote from Norrison's book. So this is sort of my takeaway here. So I have to wonder if there is a bias against quantum mechanics being made too classical, because it just seems to some physicists like a cop-out, any kind of hidden variables theory, such as the pilot wave theory, makes the intriguing mysteriousness of quantum mechanics seem banal. There is a sense in which it forces one to ask, this was the answer to our puzzling questions about superpositions and probabilistic outcomes the whole time? How disappointing. There is also the pragmatist view that textbook quantum mechanics just plain works. It has done a great job of helping us build the world we live in now, and so perhaps the mindset is, if it isn't broken, why try to fix it? Additionally, I must wonder if physicists are put off from quantum interpretations by all the quantum mysticism that has sprung up around it. In other words, trying to come up with an interpretation that goes beyond what can physically be tested is viewed as no better than peddling in all manner of quantum woo. The mystics and charlatans have proposed their own various interpretations, and among the shut-up-and-calculate enforcers of the orthodoxy, even the serious interpretations are just sort of lumped in with the bogus ones. But what I think is probably the biggest reason for this kind of stubbornness is just a sort of academic inertia that's at play. The old guard swallowed the Copenhagen interpretation orthodoxy, and then they passed it along to their students and browbeat any notions of deviating out of potential heretics, who then went on to do the same thing to their own students. Bell experiments were then, due to confirmation bias, held up as justification for maintaining and perpetuating the orthodoxy, never mind what the results actually meant. But anyway, that was everything I wanted to talk about here. I will be getting on to videos about collapse theories, objective collapse theories, and then the many worlds interpretation in the upcoming videos. I hope you found this interesting, and I will see you in the next one.